It's on. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Bristol and Worship Zone. This is Rochelle. And I am really glad to have you guys here with us. If you're wondering why I'm all out of breath, because I just came darting downstairs <laughs> so that uh, we can ensure that uh, we wouldn't be terribly late on <laughs> having a live stream, you know, having church in your own house and then being late for that. That wouldn't be good. But I just wanted to say welcome, and I am so glad that we're together, even though we're not together physically. Um, we can be in one mind and in one accord, just like they were on the day of Pentecost. And um, in so many other times where uh, Paul spoke to the church in different letters and said, you know, that we should be in one mind and um, one accord, one, one um, having said the same thing, things like that. And so I am, I just want to say welcome. Um, I also want to just give some special shout outs to all um, our Bristol Worship Center family. If you are joining us uh, for the first time online, thank you so much for making us part of your evening. Uh, Thursday nights we have ECL, which is Essentials of the Christian Life. And it is a Bible study time. It's going to be an awesome time tonight. Um, and, but if you are a Bristol Worship uh, Center family member, I just want to say hi. The screen isn't to me, so I don't know who is on right now, but I just want to send, um, just love to you guys and saying how much I can't wait for us to connect again and just be able to be together. But, you know, uh, Sister Tammy, Sister April, Brother Kevin, uh, Sister uh, Jackie Gordon, Sister Jackie LaSalle, Sister Lisa McCoy, um, Sister Christina Lips, and just all of you, forgive me if I forget anything, that's the thing with saying names, and if you forget someone, um, Sister Donna, um, Sister, uh, I'm forgetting someone I know I am. Brother Viper. Uh, Brother Viper, Sister Rose, cannot forget them. Um, and I just want to thank you guys for showing us love. Uh, on these live streams, but not only that, but just staying connected, staying in the body and just, you know, making sure that you are still leaning on Jesus because that's so, so important. So I just want to let you guys know how much we love you, how much we uh, miss being together. Um, and so I'll, that ends, ends my little spiel and, and all of that. We're going to go before the Lord tonight. We're going to worship him. We're going to love on him. We're going to honor him. Father, thank you so much for this time, God. We need you so much, Lord. It's our desire, it's my heart's desire that you be here because I just want you. I just want you. I just want you to have your way. I just want you to do whatever pleases you, God. So in this time, Lord Jesus, have your way, Lord. Not my will, but God will be done in the name of Jesus. We're going to sing that song, Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Oh, welcome Holy Spirit.
Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Let's just give God some glory. Let's just give him some praise. Because despite what has been happening, I have to glorify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I've got to honor him. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, God, for just keeping me. Thank you, Jesus, for another day of breath. Thank you, Jesus, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus, for your benefits, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Jesus. Lord, I worship you, oh God. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh God, I give you the honor and the glory. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, it's so great to be in the presence of God. And we just are so thankful for who he is. Lord, I thank you. I praise you, Jesus. Have your way in this place, Lord. Glory to your name. Why don't we just lift up our hands? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. God, you're in this place. I love you, Lord. I worship you, almighty King. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor Chris, if you'd come. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello. Praise the Lord. We are so excited to be here, and, and welcome to Bristol Worship Center. Um, for all of those that we did, we uh, forgot to name, we haven't forgotten you. We are so glad that you are here. Um, and I remembered several as she was speaking that we, we didn't mention. And you know that we love you. Uh, and please just stay connected and uh, so that we can all stay connected together. I was so encouraged um, hearing from a couple of people uh, just connecting with each other. Uh, in the church, and that's so important that we connect together, um, and the body of Christ strengthens each other, because that is, is what it's all about, it's not about a church building, it's not about the place that we're at, because obviously this is different than, than any of us have experienced church our entire lives, um, but it is about the body of Christ still coming together, so thank you um, for connecting with us and joining with us. It is my distinct privilege and honor to introduce a special speaker tonight. Uh, this person is uh, in just a, a marvelous and wonderful woman of God. Um, I was going to be a little silly in how I introduced her, but I just, I want to just say how wonderful it is being married to, um, to Sister Rochelle. She is amazing. Uh, and those of you that have heard her teach before in the past know that you are in for a special treat. Um, she, one of the things I love about her is that uh, she walks the walk and talks the talk. You don't you don't see one version of her in church one day, and then I see a different version of her the next day. That's not, not who she is at all. She, When you see her, that is, is who she is. And she's just a beautiful, wonderful woman of God, called of God uh, to speak the gospel and to preach and to teach and to tell others about who Jesus Christ is. And it truly is my privilege and honor to be married to her. So I'm going to ask that she comes and uh, does the Bible study tonight um, and just get behind her. I know we can't hear you say amen, but uh, I love seeing everyone interact and, and everything online um, once the uh, once the service is over. And, and so give her some love tonight and, uh, and we're going to just enjoy the teaching uh, from Sister Michelle. Again, everyone. I want to also make sure that I mention uh, Sister Yvonne. I, I, I was, um, I can't believe I forgot to say that, but you know, much love to her as well. And anyone else I might have forgotten, please forgive me. Give me grace tonight uh, because I'm already terribly nervous. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. It's just, that's how I am. I, I get terribly nervous if I have to teach. And so, um, you know, it's, Whenever the services are happening and um, God is moving, you know, the great thing about God is I can rest in Him. And as long as He's present, I can Amen. rest in Him and be assured that um, it is not my words that are coming, but it's His words that are coming. And so um, tonight, I just encourage you to um, rest in His 
words and just have faith in his word. And so tonight we are going to talk about the power of the name. Um, this may be a two-parter, not sure yet. Um, or it might be so terribly short that pastor will have to come up and he will have to finish teaching as well. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for just tuning in. Um, usually when, whether uh, myself or pastor is getting ready to teach, one of the things that you'll hear me say is, um, as I'm praying to um, Lord to help us, you know, I'll ask God to help us to be, to receive the word gladly mixed with faith, or I'll say to you to receive the word gladly and mix it with faith. And there's a reason why I say that. Um, some of you may know already, some of you may not, but this comes from uh, two verses. Acts chapter 2, verse 41, and um, Hebrews chapter 4, um, verse 1 and 2, primarily verse 2. And so this particular portion is not necessarily part of what I'm teaching tonight, but I wanted to um, just make sure you knew why I said that all the time. And um, Acts chapter 2, verse 41 says, and I'll give you a chance to turn to it if you want to, but like I said, it's not part of the teaching that I'm actually doing right now. But Acts chapter 2, verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his words, his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. The reference is to Peter. This is in Acts when the day of Pentecost had happened. They just received the Holy Ghost, and they just finished preaching and teaching um, to people that they should repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And so he's just done all of that. You know, and so um, now the reference is that they that gladly received his word, talking about Peter's word, were baptized. And the same day they were um, added to them about 3,000 souls. So that's why I always say, receive the word gladly. And because um, they that gladly received his word were baptized. And it says that um, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And that tells me there were probably more than 3,000 people there. But they that gladly received the word followed it with baptism because they believed it. Right? And then in Hebrews 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us, entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto yes. us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached unto, preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And in that they're um, talking about some people who did not stay with the gospel, did not stay with what Paul and the other apostles were preaching. And so he's explaining, you know, listen, be mindful. Don't, you know, be, be careful that this promise, you know, you're, you're not coming short of it and, and then you come short of entering into the rest. But like I said, it is not the main topic, um, although it does apply um, to some degree. But it's important that when we read the word of God, that we not only be hearers of the word, that we not just um, be an observer um, or just listening, but we need to be doers of the word. We need to mix that word with faith. It's great if we receive it gladly, but it has to be mixed with faith. And so um, I, encourage you, I encourage you to not only um, hear, but to do the word of God according to uh, James um, chapter 1. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and read that. And that's James 1, 22 to 25. And I know that I said that um, this is, you know, the major part of what I'm teaching. But I do want us to at least and James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25 it says but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your, your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer 
He's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I encourage you again, um, receive the word gladly and mix it with faith. Don't be just a hearer, but be a doer of the word of, and the work of God. Amen. Amen. So, in this, I'm encouraging you, let's walk by faith, not just by sight. Let's walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. Um, Amen. Jesus said in John 6 and 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's important that God's word is the ultimate authority in our lives. Um, and I have put myself a reminder here that as a side note, uh, God's voice will never disagree with his word. Okay? Amen. God's Amen. voice will never disagree with his word. So once again, gladly receive the word. And mix it with faith. Amen. All right. So, um, what are we talking about tonight? Tonight we're talking about the power of the name. If you would turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 12, and that's where we're taking our text from, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Now, we know that the book of Acts is powerful. Lots of things were done. And in this particular portion, um, it's Peter that is... Um, that we're going to be dealing with in this little portion here. But we're going to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I can virtually hear the pages flipping, or maybe mm -hmm. that's just mine. Maybe all of you are super Bible scholars, and you're already there. And um, and so I've got a lot of it you know, written here, but I want to make sure that there were no typos in this. Um, so... Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given to me to speak to your people tonight. Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint my lips, anoint my heart, anoint my mind, God. And let it be, Father, that whatever I speak, it's only what you want me to speak, Jesus. Let me be just obedient, just an open vessel for you to use tonight, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I pray, God, that we would all be um, not only hearers but doers, that we would all receive this word gladly and mix it with faith and allow you, Lord Jesus, to grow um, the seed that you place in us, God, that it would bear fruit in your kingdom, Jesus, so that we can be just mighty men and women of you, Lord God, yes, and of your Jesus. great name, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. God, I know, Father, Amen. you have a mighty work to do Amen. through us and through each and every heart that's here, God. And you want to do great things. You want to deliver. You want to set free. You want to um, save. You want to strengthen. You want to bring peace. You want to bring victory. Amen. And Lord, all of that is in your name. And I give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name. Amen. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's Amen. power in the name. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory of what's happening back there in Acts chapter 3. Um, the apostle Peter and um, John, they are walking and they are headed to the synagogue, and they are in front of the gate called Beautiful, the front of the this particular entrance. And at this entrance, there is a man that is sitting, and he's been lame for about 40 years, and he is um, begging as he did every single day. Every single day, someone brought him to the temple, and he sat there, and he begged, and that's what he did. But he was lame from birth. He couldn't walk. And so on this particular day... Um, here he was doing the thing that he always does, doing the thing that he was used to doing day after day after day. And so um, Peter and John, um, they were coming to the synagogue, they were coming to the temple, and as they did, this man um, 
who was, you know, somehow with all that Jesus did and with all the people that he healed and with all the things that um, occurred while he was here on earth, this guy didn't become part of the story of Jesus healing. But sometimes God allows things in our lives and sometimes uh, things don't happen the way that we think they ought to. And sometimes, you know, it seems like everybody else is getting delivered and everybody else is, is getting set yeah. free. And everybody right. else, you know, is getting the thing that they're hoping for and praying right. for. But here was this man sitting at the gate, beautiful, and, you know, doing what he did daily. He didn't get delivered when Jesus was walking the earth. He didn't get healed, you know, when people, um, when, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus was um, here and he was, um, you know, delivering all of these people. But instead, here he was. And as he was there... He did what he always did. He asked for alms from Peter and John. And John looked at him. Peter looked at him. And Peter saw faith. And he said, you know, um, silver and gold have I none. I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold. I don't have money to give you. But such as I have. In other words, the thing I do have, I can give you that. Yes. And so he said, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, by the power of the name of Jesus, here is this 40-year-old who'd been lame from birth, has now come into um, being healed and being set free from the bond of being lame all of his life. Thank you very much. Excuse me. And so... As I was saying before, sometimes things don't happen the way that you expect because God will allow some things to be left so that it can glorify him when the, when the right time comes and when the answer comes, you'll know Amen. purely who it's from and yeah. that you won't apply that answer to something else like your intelligence or your own righteousness or your own holiness or, you know, giving glory to maybe a good friend or whatever it may be. But instead, it was when this miracle happened, it was noted that, you know what, it was a true miracle because everybody saw this man daily. Every single day he was there and he was begging and asking, you know, help me to survive. Help me to right. eat again. Help me to, right. you know, just asking for help. But when true help came along, you know, when Peter put his gaze on him and he was ready to allow God to work. When that man looked at him, the man expected to receive some kind of, you know, a uh, physical compensation. He, he said, silver and gold have I none. And when he began, that man was not expecting to be healed that day. But I'm telling you, sometimes God has Amen. something that's unexpected. But there is power in his name. Amen. I want to just encourage you that there is real power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power in the name of Jesus. So here we are. At Acts chapter 4, that's that's in chapter 3. And here we are at Acts chapter 4. So the, the high priest has, has observed all of this. These people are all gathered. They're, you know, ready to worship Peter and John. And Peter is letting them know, listen, we didn't do this by our own holiness. We didn't do this by our own right. righteousness. Right. The way that this happened is by the name of Jesus. And once again, Peter begins to, again, speak a very similar message that he spoke on the day of Pentecost that, you know, you crucified the Holy One, but he's yeah. risen from the dead. Yeah. And it's by this um, name that yeah. we're preaching. And it's by this name that there is power. And when yeah. the high priest heard, you know, they, they asked them, they said, hold on, hold on, hold on. They went to, if you go um, down to verse 7. Of chapter 4. Matter of fact, you can go to verse 6 first. And it says, And Annas, the high priest, and Cephas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Right. Because... One of the things is, if there is power, there is a source, and that source is attached to the name that you speak. So they yeah. wanted to know, hold Amen. on, 
by what power or by what name have you done this? And it wasn't the first time that that question was asked because that question was asked of Jesus Christ. When he was doing his miracles, the priest came along again and said, hold on, what's the source of your power? By, by what power are you doing this? So it wasn't the first time for that question. And when Peter, and Peter answered him, he answered him in, in verse um, 12 and he said, you know, he started at verse 10 and he says, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, that this man stand here before you whole. Amen. This is the stone which was set at naught of the builders, which has become the yes. head of the corner. Amen. And he says in verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. There is power Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's just thank worship Jesus. the King of Kings. Lord, I yes, thank you Lord. for your I name. I thank you, Jesus, for the thank covering you, of your name, oh God. Hallelujah, you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be an intellectual. But when you have been with Jesus, it becomes evident. It's going to show up and people will take notice that, you know what? Amen. There's something different about him. There's something different about her. I Amen. think they've been with Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. I give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. So they didn't have knowledge. They weren't at the top of the, the uh, social structure. You know, they weren't social influencers. People didn't look to them to find out what the latest anything was. But when they looked at them that day, they realized, wait a minute. It's them. They talk like him. They act like him. They've got the power he has. And so yeah. they knew right then they've Amen. been with Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. Lord. I give you the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, there is. When these priests, you know, realized who they were, when they realized they're one of them, mm. They talked among themselves, if you go down to verse 16, saying, what shall we do to these men for that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and yeah. we cannot deny it. Yeah. They said, we can't deny that what has happened is real, that there is evidence of this power source that they speak yeah. of. And they said, you know what? But then it spread no further so that nobody else really finds out about this among the people. Let's straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. They didn't have a problem with what was done, but they had a problem with who did it. They had a problem with the fact that they spoke and yeah. taught and preached in this name because they realized it's not just what they were saying, but who they were saying it by, yeah. who was Amen. speaking through them That's and good. by whom they had the power. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor preached a little bit ago when he talked about um, where the Bible talks about out of your belly is going to be, is that the, is that the, will be rivers of living water. And one of the things that he talked about was that when it says, you know, it's not just talking about just, you know, just the rivers or the, or the authority, or maybe it was the, which, pardon me, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm asking pastor, like, you know, what, what was that verse again? But I, the head. Oh, the, the source, right. So he was talking about how it wasn't just the the um, the head, meaning just the head of authority, but it was talking about the head, meaning the source. I believe that it was the yeah. verse that talked about how um, Christ, is Christ is the head of the church. And, yeah. and so, you know, when I look at this verse again, the source is important. The name is important. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. And after, 
you know, they talked among themselves, you know, they called them in verse 18 and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. They didn't say that they couldn't preach and teach what they wanted. They were okay if they walked around and taught morality, you know, or they talked about just being good citizens, you know, or talked about, you know, let's help one another. But the fact is they were talking about something deeper than that, something yeah. more than that. Yeah. It wasn't just about morality or being able to just think yourself free. But it was talking about yes. connecting them with a power yeah. higher than they are, with a power deeper than they are. They were. Yeah. He was saying, you know what, come on, there's power in the name of Jesus. In the same way True. that that man was set free who was laying for 40 years, in the same way this same Jesus can set you free. Amen. And so there was a, you know, they had a problem with the name of Jesus. Amen. Because they recognized that there was power in Jesus. His name. Amen. His power in Amen. his name. Thank you, Jesus. True. Glory to the name of the Lord. If you go with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, and um, I'll just wait for you guys to flip on because I've got it here on my paper. But in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says... Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Let me turn to that because I think I cut off some of it. But at the name of Jesus, help me out someone, if you're already there, can you just uh, say it out for me, verse 10, finish Amen. up verse 10, or 11. And things under the earth, and that every mm -hmm. tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, Lord, the Father. The Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's given him a name which is above every name, that at that name, that every knee should bow of things in heaven and earth, under the earth, and that um, uh, every, every tongue should confess, every tongue should confess Amen. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. That Jesus Christ is Lord. We look at some of the, um, some of the history of prayer in school and some of the ways in which Christianity and how it's presented socially has changed over the years. You know, there were times where, you know, people freely prayed in school and no one had a problem with that, but it came a point where people had a problem with that. And so prayer in schools had been removed. And even now at this time, there are people who wish to make it illegal for parents to teach their children about Jesus. I want to tell you that these are not things that are by chance. All right. There is power in the name of Jesus. And Amen. it is completely and wholly the plan of the enemy to, re to remove your ability to access the power of the name of Jesus. Now, the great thing about the name, it's not limited to whether someone gives you permission to use it or not. But God himself gives permission when we come in covenant with him. He allows you to have Amen. power. He, he gives you the authority of his name. He says, you can use my name. He says, I'll cover you with my name. And all of those things when we come in covenant with him. And how do we come into covenant with him? Through baptism. Through Amen. baptism. We're buried Amen. with him yeah. in baptism. Amen. We're buried with him in baptism. Amen. Why is that important? 
over the years, there are there have been ways in which, you know, people have, the Bible tells us that, you know, we need to be careful not to be um, spoiled by vain philosophies and, you know, the philosophies of men. And so um, we have to be careful that we are always mindful of the word of God. We always go back to the word of God for the authority. We always go back to the word of God um, concerning anything because we don't want to fall short of um, entering into his rest. We don't want to fall short of it. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to, um, to, to, um, to take care of our salvation uh, carefully. With fear and trembling. Because it has to be by the word of God. You want to stay connected into the power. You want to stay connected into the name. You want to stay connected into the strength. The reason why they told Paul and John, I mean Peter and John, not to preach or teach in that name was because the power was attached to the name. Yeah. The covenant that we have with Jesus is attached to his name. If we go to Mark chapter 16, let's go there. Let's go to Mark chapter 16, verse 16. We're going to read from verse 16 and 17. 16, Mark 16, 16 and 17. I'm making sure that I'm turning this time because I want to make sure in case I've cut off some verse or something like that. So Mark chapter 16, verse 16. And Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth, and this is Jesus talking to, um, to his disciples. As a matter of fact, we can start in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? Yeah. They shall speak with new tongues. And verse 18 gives some other devils take up serpents. If they, bring, if they drink any deadly thing, it won't kill them. There is power in the name of Jesus. And so when I said we're baptized with him, um, we're buried with him, in baptism, that is the thing that connects us to Christ. And so here he is telling them again that if you believe, you're going to be baptized. And so he's talked to his 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 disciples, his apostles, many many times about you know baptism. When he there was when John the Baptist was baptizing, he baptized with repentance. So this was not a new concept to the Jewish people of the time. They they understood that it was going to be by by uh, baptism that the remission and the washing away of sins was going to happen. Right. So when Jesus Christ died and he was risen, it changed what needed to happen because before they were baptizing unto repentance because they did not yet know the name or it wasn't uh, generally known. And so um, even when John baptized, he said, I'm baptizing you with water, but there's someone that's coming after me and he's going to really baptize you. He's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. And so that name was so important that when, you know, as Jesus taught them throughout the time that he was with them after he was risen, he stayed with them another 40 days. And so he yeah. taught them um, while he was still here on earth. And so, um, after he left, when it came about 10 days after he ascended into heaven, the disciples were there and they were at the day of Pentecost and they were talking. They had just received the Holy Ghost. And when a group inquired of them and said, hey, what's going on? When they talked to them about what was happening, that they weren't drunk, but this was, you know, what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Amen. He talked with them, and at the end of all of it, what did they, what did Peter talk to them about? He talked to them about Jesus. Right. He talked to them about Jesus. Because this is Peter again that says that there is salvation in no other name. For this is the only name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. So when he talked to them about Jesus and they said, hold on, uh, you know, their hearts were pricked and they said, wait a minute, you just loaded all this stuff on us. You just told us that we've just killed the prince of life and, and that we are wicked and that we've got sin and that we can't get rid of it on our own. So what should we do? So they ask him, what do we do now, Peter? And Peter says to them, because now he's got the Holy Ghost and he has understanding of what Jesus Christ had been teaching and preaching this whole time. And he says to them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. There's power in the name Amen. of Jesus. He didn't just say, just be baptized and, and, and go back to being uh, baptized unto repentance. Not only that, but when he asked, when those people said, what shall we do? Peter didn't say at that point, you know what? Everything is fine. I realize that you believe me. And so you believed on him. But he went and he said, listen, there's a way that you can have your sins washed away. He said, repent, turn for what you're doing and then repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they needed to come into the covenant. They needed to come into the new covenant Amen. because they were under the law. They were under the old covenant and they couldn't keep it. They couldn't. Um, do all that it required because they failed at it over and over. And so there was a way that finally they could be reconciled to the king. Finally, they could be back with God in, in relationship. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's so many things, so many verses that talk about the power of the name of Jesus power of the name of Jesus when the 70 were sent by Jesus right he had 70 disciples they sent them off two by two so when the 70 came back they came back with joy and they said master even the devils are subject to us because of your name yeah because of your name right when Peter was talking to the high priest, I'm going to go back to um, Acts chapter 4. He was talking to them, talking to the high priests. And he says something that I really, I really love in that verse. Yeah, I'm slower than slower when it comes to trying to find... My, uh, my verse. And, um, I'm looking for the verse that says, um, by faith, in his name, by faith. In the name of the Lord. Yes. Verse 4, verse 10. Yeah. So forgive me, guys. I'm, 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 I'm looking for... Ah, verse 16. 3, yeah. verse 16. Chapter 3, verse 16. And uh, I'm imagining that Sister Jackie Gordon is probably... Was already telling me. It's verse 16. Because uh, she's a flash at finding things in her Bible. But 3 verse 16, and in his name, he's talking um, to the, he's talking to the, to the people and he's saying, and his, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see now, Amen. if you, whom ye see and know. Because they knew him all his life. They knew that this guy had been sitting there every single day. They knew that he was 40 years old. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So in talking to the people, he says, and his name through faith in his name. Matter of fact, if you look at the, um, the verse just before, we're looking at verse 14 and 15 just before. He says, he's talking to them. He's, they're asking, you know, you know, what happened? Matter of fact, I guess we better back up to verse 12. 
He says, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, marvel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we've made this man to walk? Why are you looking at it like we just did something? But instead, he's talking to them and he says, you know, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and kill the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And Amen. his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. Let me tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus. There Amen. is joy and there's victory. But let me tell you, on no uncertain terms, there's power in the name of Jesus. Let me tell Amen. you, Satan likes to look, make it seem as though the power that he has can overcome the power of who Jesus is. But right. I'm telling you, on no, on, with, you know, on no uncertain terms, that that's a lie. And that there is no way because the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In other words, God, there is no other power higher than Jesus because right. all power is subject unto him. So when his disciples came, they came with joy. Why? Because when they realized that even the devils were subject because of his name, they realized that everything was subject because yeah. of his name. He yeah. re they realized that he is the highest power there is. And so right. I just encourage you, know that there is power in the name of Jesus. If you have covenanted with Jesus, if you, when you got baptized, you allowed that name to be spoken over you. As you were baptized, you've got power to overcome. You've got power to, um, to have victory. You've got power to live a delivered life. Not because Amen. of your knowledge, not because of your intelligence, Amen. but because of the power of the name of Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord, we glorify your mighty name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. In the Old Amen. Testament, there are so many verses. They talk about the name of the Lord. It's a strong tower. The righteous run if they're in and they're safe. Lord, I thank you for the power of your name. I encourage you, there is power in the name of Jesus. But I'm telling you, you've got to access that power. Let God allow you to take advantage of the power of his covering, the power of his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. When the seven sons of Sceva decided they were going to cast out some devils, they had observed some things. They had seen some things. The Bible doesn't tell us all that they had seen or what they'd seen or what they observed. But whatever they saw and heard and observed, it was enough for them to know that there was power in the name of Jesus. But right. the problem was they weren't willing to covenant with Jesus, but they wanted the power that that name offered. So when right. they went along and they decided, we're going to cast you out based on, we're going to, we're going to, we're casting you out in the name of the Jesus that Paul speaks of. And so, you know, the answer those devils have had, they were like, yeah, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? Why? They didn't have access to the name. They wanted to have the power that came with the name, but they were unwilling to covenant with the owner, with, with the one that died that had that name. And so I encourage you once again, access the power. Don't allow the yeah. enemy to, to keep you from your covenant, your covenant promises and your covenant rights and your covenant Amen. benefits. But Amen. those things come through covenant and the covenant comes through the name and the name comes through baptism. And so when you're buried in Christ, you take on his name. Just as the disciples spoke, every time that someone took on the covenant in Acts, they took on the name. They were buried in Jesus. It, right. it, in, in so many verses, it says that they were baptized in the name of the Lord or baptized in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the name mattered. The covenant mattered. It had to be the name that's spoken Amen. over them. Amen. And when they spoke that name, you may be wondering, well, no, I, 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 had, um, I was baptized. Praise God, you've taken that step. And you may look and you say, well, I'm, I'm good because I've got, you know, Matthew um, 23, 19. 
28, 19. Can you guys tell I'm a little nervous? <laughs> so Matthew 28, 19. Let's go there. And this is a powerful verse and a mighty verse. Go ye therefore. First of all, let's go to verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. There's power in the name. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Well, we want you to be baptized in the name. That is all three of those. Why? Because when the, when the apostles spoke, when they understood what Jesus talked about, they didn't go around and repeat baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but they fulfilled what Jesus spoke. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. And had they felt like, hey, I've gotten it wrong, or if they, the disciples that were staying with Peter on the day of Pentecost thought, you know what, he's screwing this up. He's saying the wrong thing. You know what, they would have said, no, 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 this isn't too important. We can't have you just, you know, just deciding to do your own thing. But instead, they, they fulfilled the word of God because he knew that there was only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This is the one name, the name that, where, where, that the father decided to take on when he came to this earth in flesh because he is the word made flesh. And so when the Lord came to this earth in flesh, this is the name that he took on. And this is the name, since this is the name he took on, this is the name that we have to take on. So when you are buried in Christ, let the name of Jesus be spoken of you over you just as they did in the word of God. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you and say, well, I don't need that. I was already baptized. Let me tell you something. There's power in the name of Jesus. And no devil wants you to take on that name because that name comes with some promises. That name comes with some benefits. That name comes with some power. Amen. And so I encourage you today, fulfill the word of God. Don't just read it. Don't just be an observer. Don't just be a hearer. But on this day, become a doer and let God. God's name reign in your home, your heart, your mind. Fulfill the word of God and let Jesus cover you. Let Jesus give you the power that you desire. Let Jesus rule and reign over your life. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I encourage you, take on that power. God wants you to have that power. His name is mighty. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power in the name of Jesus. If we go to Colossians 3.17, I'm wrapping up. Jesus, hallelujah. Colossians 3.17. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We're reading verse 16 and 17. Actually, we're going to start in verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You know, some people may look at that and go, well, it's not really, you know, the actual name.
that needs to be spoken. It's the authority of the name. But I'm here to tell you, you cannot separate the name from the authority of the name. Without the name, there is no authority. But this is the name. This is the one Lord, the one faith, the one baptism. This is the one. This is the one true and living God that has come. He's died. He's come in flesh. He's lived, he's died, and was risen for Amen. our sins. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The blood of the Lamb is attached to his name. The power and the ability for you to overcome is attached to the name of Jesus. Sometimes you may be wondering if in your mind you've you've felt, especially if you've got the Holy Ghost and you were not baptized in the name of Jesus, at times you may have felt in your mind, you know, I feel like there's something missing. I feel like there's something else that's supposed to happen. Fulfill the word of God and I'm telling you things will change. It will, you'll, you'll find things that just completely revealed in your heart and mind by the word of God and by the spirit of God. Amen. If you've got questions about what I'm teaching tonight, please reach out. You can message us. You can call us. You can text us. Um, you can email us. <laughs> and so, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and if you feel like, you know what, I need to fulfill this word. I'm not going to be a sideliner anymore but I am going to fulfill this word. Or if you're just sitting there, you know what? I, I was baptized, you know, before um, with what I knew about Matthew 28, 19, but, you know, God has revealed that I've got to have his name because that's how the apostles did it. And you need to be baptized? We do that. <laughs> and so I encourage you today, read the word of God. Look through the book of Acts. Look through whenever they were baptized I want to bring you to one more verse. 1 Corinthians 1, and we're going to go to um, verse 11 and 12. And then I'm wrapping up. First Corinthians. And we're in chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter one. We're looking at um, we're looking at um, verse eleven, twelve, and thirteen. It says, "For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you." Now this I say that every one of you safe. Oh, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. He said, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? There's a reason why he says that. Because when they were baptized, they were baptized in the one, the name of the one that died for them. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. So that's why he could ask of them the question, was I Paul, was Paul crucified for you? Or was, did you, were you baptized in my name, in the name of Paul? And, you know, he goes on and says, I thank God I didn't baptize any of you. You know, so that you can't say, you know, that that I baptized you in my name. If you look in um, verse 14 and 15, list, then he should say that I had baptized in my own name. The name is important. The name of Jesus has power. I'm not saying that as just a nice little saying, but truly there is power in the name. And 
you know, the enemy desires to keep you from that covenant name, that covenant power, the covenant promises, the covenant benefits. Amen. God wants you to have that power. Let me tell you that there is power in the name of Jesus. And if you feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm not grasping this right now. It's not coming. I'm asking you to pray for revelation. Lord, right now, Jesus, I pray God that you would Amen. open the eyes of your people. Father, Amen. I pray that you would open the eyes and the hearts of any person, Lord Jesus, that's seeking your face and seeking to, to, to draw closer to you, Lord God. I'm asking you right now in your great name, Jesus, have your way, Lord. Let it not be my will or their will, but God, let them give their will over to your will, Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, that people would draw close to you and have a desire to take on your name, Amen. your name, yes, so Lord. that they can be identified with you in the name of Jesus. When you take on the name, you are identified with Christ, being buried with him in baptism will also be raised to life in him. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Pastor, did you have anything you'd like to come up and say? No. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, um, we'd love to answer them. Um, we'd love to take time in and talk with any of you. And I hope that this was a blessing to you. Maybe for you, it might be a way to talk to other people about the gospel. Because above all, we preach Jesus and him crucified. And so we just encourage you to just let God just have his way in your life. Let God speak to you. Let God give you um, understanding and, and revelation in his word. Have a great night. God bless you guys. And let's just go out worshiping the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all that you've done. God, to you be the Amen. glory. Above all, Lord, let your will be done. To you be the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed tonight.